The Phoenix compound has blown away my expectations. I never expected something so new that Valve has made to bring in so much honest fun. Though at first, it seemed like a dry, boring, one-dimensional map. The more I played it, the more I could appreciate the aspects of this interesting and totally new style mapping from Valve. To begin, I know this isn't a totally new style of mapping in Counter-Strike. In fact, one of the most popular maps in the same genre, Co-op Mission Rush, has hang gliders, awesome ropes, and trains. TRAINS! How could anything be better than that? Well, it has to do with the depth. On my first playthrough, I really didn't think much of it. There wasn't anything bad. My partner and I never really got frustrated, we didn't die, and though I was really bad at listening to directions, I did carry him. But after that, I thought that would be it. I didn't think it had so much replay value. It seemed so bland, but I was wrong. My friend Treedcramp wanted to play. This time, I knew I was about to have a different experience when he showed me the first secret in the map. A hard mode. From here, my feelings towards the map started to amount very quickly. In my first playthrough, I didn't pay much attention to details because I didn't think there were many details to look at. But I couldn't have been more wrong. He showed me so many little details, so many little secrets, so many fun facts. He thoroughly explored the map for everything it had, and to that, I thank you, Treed. He made me realize the actual value the map had. Exploration. This map is best for those that want to find every single part of a map. And this is why I like the map so much. It's so simple, but offers so much to do. Funny not the fastest way to do a room, exploiting shortcuts, finding all the coins, trying to break outside of the map. It sparked a creative side of me that I haven't felt in Counter-Strike in a long time. In matchmaking, a lot of creativity and different moves are punished, and rightfully so for competitive games like Counter-Strike. But Valve being able to unlock the other side the game can offer shows me how great the game can really be. It inspired me to even go through the rooms and find some alternative ways to doing the rooms. It suddenly expands the official game modes. Valve has in this operation changed a large part of it, from narrow gameplay focused on aim and strategy, to this fun, non-linear map style that is dynamic to plays and changes. So, how does the map structure function? In the first room, you are instantly presented with a health syringe, adding a new aspect to CS that hasn't been here. Like, ever. Next, in a room, you can choose what weapons from a small list to pick, along with four grenades. One of the options being the tactical awareness grenade, which adds a huge part of the map considering it's only a one-time use. Already, the map gives you a huge variety of choice for your playstyle, and an additional option to go pro and pick pistols only. Next is the biggest difference in the map. If you are like me and are focused on just getting through the map, you may have stepped on the pet here and went. However, when Treed Crep showed me this room, I was blown away. This hidden and inconspicuous door holds a whole new difficulty in a unique fashion versus the typical, what bots do you want to face? Either way you choose, you are teleported with your friends, once both on the platform, to this sort of forest part of the map. From here, you are quickly met with your first enemy. If you're new to the map, you're likely to just climb up the building, seeing what is going on. But as you play the map continually, you almost get a feeling of intuitiveness when you find the perfect angle to hit the bot. He didn't know what was coming. Right after, you face several bots that in hard mode already pose a huge threat, setting the stage for the whole map. I am not ashamed to admit that I have died to the bots. At times, they are simply faster than me. Next is the facility. Two new elements are introduced in this part of the map. Exploding barrels? and secret coins. As of right now, I don't know what the coins are for. They just seem to be a little mini game for you and your friends. But exploding barrels add a bit of decision making that you only understand after you go through the map. Little does your first playthrough know, you will be in the exact same spot against stronger, faster, and overall better bots. Do you use your grenades in advance in hopes to make it to a checkpoint? Do you shoot the barrels now and hope you are able to outskill the bots later? Do you try and power through it now? These are all questions you'll find yourself asking as you pour through the map. The next two rooms add a sense of teamwork, with the option of two doors for you and your buddy to fly through together to crossfire the enemies as they don't see what's coming. Next, a room full of tents offers multiple different things to look at. In the end of the second room, you see the last large new aspect these maps are introducing, heavy bots. These things spooked me for the first time when I saw them, and on hard mode, they actually pose a challenge. I'm interested to see how well these will be applied in the future. The next room to me foreshadows what future missions on this map will encourage. The simple act of teamwork seems like a framework for extended puzzle solving we will possibly need to do in the future. Who knows, maybe I'm just crazy. 
The last new room in this mission rewards you for saving your grenades and thoroughly going through the map. This difficult drop down area is made a hundred times easier using your single tactical grenade and flashbang, though there is a flashbang you can grab in this tent. Otherwise, you may be in for a bit of a surprise. Here we go, run it. 1v5, easy. Okay, none of them are flashed. <laughs> As you return to your facility, you'll find bots in similar positions, but this time much more difficult. This part of the map actually excited me knowing that one false step out into the open with these bots will send me back to the very beginning once I die, where I would need to start again. Again, there is a heavy terrorist that is perfectly capable of running you over, and thus actually makes you feel nervous, and try to defeat him knowing that the stakes are on the line. In the final intense part of the mission, a helicopter is taking its sweet time as you return to your spawn. From here, you meet a barrage of terrorists coming in left and right ready to take your life. As a helicopter flies over you, you finally finish the mission with a detailed tally of your points that highlights the possibility of what you can do in the future. An intriguing way, for me at least, to persuade me to play it again. It may just be me, but this map let alone is worth the $6 for the operation. It offers interesting aspects that an official maps haven't opened. The most exciting part for me is looking far down the pages and seeing what the next co-op missions will have in store.